Last week, God revealed to us the importance of, instead of practicing something that we are not meant to do, God encourages us to forgive and love instead. Remember that we were not designed to judge. No one was designed to judge. I was asked this morning by my brother-in-law, which is a very good question, how about those people who are called as judged in the law? Well, to be honest with you, the answer there is that it was never intended for the children of God to have other king beside him. It was never intended to be like that. It was never intended, it was never designed by God to have someone other than him. But because of our stubbornness, well, to begin with, with the Israelites, God gave them David. And that is the beginning of the judges. Mind you, it is not his intention for people to judge. We were not designed to judge, but rather to forgive and to love. By the way, can we remove the reverb on my mic, please? Can we mute it? Thank you very much. Okay. That is why God revealed to us and in the two-part series, first it will be to, uh, this, tonight, and the next one will be the next, next Saturday, because we have a guest speaker next Saturday. Investing on the message on investing in forgiveness. Who among you know the word investment? You know, putting, setting aside your money for future purpose or for something that is profitable. Whenever you invest, I have never seen anybody who invested money and they expect their money to lose. Right? You invest something so that something, that thing that you invested will earn something or you will grow and grow bigger. God is actually encouraging us that instead of judging, to invest on forgiveness. But there is one problem. Whenever we talk about forgiveness, we always think about the forgiveness of God towards human beings. Well, that is true. That is the beginning of forgiveness. In fact, a lot of people, they can't remove that idea or they can't help but associate forgiveness with God. The two are always connected. We have the tendency to focus when it comes to forgiveness on God which is good. But we must never forget that forgiveness also pertains to the forgiveness of people or capacity of people to forgive another or toward, to forgive other people. The capacity of a human being to forgive another human being. When you say forgive, it means as what the Greek word says, as what we've learned before, is to forget about the judgment or the punishment associated with the sin or the mistake that the person correct, uh, committed. I'll give you one example. For example, I had an accident. Remember, my car slipped on a four-way stop just in front of our church, and there is this truck that so happened that was crossing the four-way stop and hit us. It's my mistake. So according to the law, I have, or my insurance has to repair his car, and they did. When you say forgiveness, if I own the truck, if I am the driver of the truck, when I say forgiveness, okay, forget about the repair, you just go. Forget about the penalty. Forget about the payment for the mistake. That is what you call forgiveness. Filipinos, they have a different meaning of forgiveness or forgive. Filipinos, they're very familiar with this. Whenever they want to buy something, can you give it to me, forgives? That is forgiveness to them, forgives. That is not what we're talking about. Amen? We're talking about the forgiveness of human beings towards another 
towards a human being, another human being. Forgiveness is not only about how God forgives us, but also about how we forgive each other. Forgiving can be hard. When someone hurts us, why? Because of the need for us to pacify, to pacify the pain inflicted on us. It's further aggravated by our worldly mentality that only by getting even we can get rid of pain. Our idea of healing or healing pain is through the reasoning that if we cannot get even, an eye for an eye, that is, we should inflict more and greater pain to be satisfied. And for our feeling to come down, but think about it, church. How many of us really experience comfort and relief by getting even? Ask yourself. Ask the person beside you. How many of us were restored by inflicting even more pain? Or how many of us have found joy and became complete again by getting revenge or by inflicting the same amount of torment? Have you? Did you? Were, or were you able to get more sound sleep by getting even with someone? I doubt it. I bet you, I don't gamble by the way. No one here found joy and peace by getting even with other people. Especially those people who wronged them. None. But that is how the world behaves. And that is how human beings behave. That is why God considers us as a poor judge. Because our idea of judgment is getting even. When the Lord God says, Jesus Christ said, Before you've heard an eye for an eye, but I tell you the truth, love your neighbors as you love yourself. Pray for those who persecute you. If they slap you on the cheek, on the right cheek, give the other cheek. Well, that is very hard to do. I know that is very hard to do. But mind you people, it is not impossible. Because the Lord Jesus Christ showed us that it is very, very possible. And that is the only way. That is the only way we can have perfect peace in our hearts. In 1 Peter 3, 8-9, Peter wrote, To conclude, you must all have the same attitude and the same feelings. Take note of this. He was encouraging the, pe the people, especially brothers and sisters in Christ, that they should possess the same attitude and same feelings. In other words, same standard, same treatment. When I'm treating, when I am dealing with Mark, it should be the same treatment as Jello with Jello. But when I'm teaching with Ren Ren, it will be the same treatment that I will give to what's your name again? Elsa. When I'm, huh? I'm sorry, my ears is bad. So I'll let, I'll let the people church know. But when I'm dealing with Jojo, it will be the same dealing with Joshua. Yeah, it should be, actually, of course. He did, he did a good job in worshiping, leading us into worship today, right? Amen? Do you agree? Can we give a good clap offering? The Lord God said that we should possess the same feeling. He said, love one another and be kind and be humble with one another. When you say humble... You will consider, you will not consider yourself above anyone else. You consider yourself lower or equal. If you cannot make it equal, you should consider yourself lower. Do not pay back evil with evil or cursing with cursing. Instead, pay back, pay back with a blessing because a blessing is what God promised to give you when He called you. Wow. That those people who wrong you, you must pay them back with blessing. 
I like it when church are trying to persecute us or people when they're trying to persecute us. There is always a blessing that comes after the persecution. Did you notice that? Every time someone is persecuting us, even our personal lives, there is a blessing that comes after that. Because God promised that. When he said, blessing is what God promised to give you when he called you. And mind you, this sentence is connected to forgiving. So whenever you forgive, if you learn and master forgiveness, blessings will be upon you. Amen? Now, in order for us to study and to, to see the full benefit of forgiveness, the full beauty and the idea of forgiving, we have to understand what the opposite of it can do to us. What is the opposite of forgiveness? Starts with letter V. Vengeance. The Lord God said, vengeance is mine. What does vengeance can do to us? Number one, in Proverbs 10, 12, it says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love cover all, covers all offenses. It is the main cause of senseless argument. No matter where you go, no matter what arena you are in, or where you are in, if there is an argument, chances are it is about vengeance. 100%. Even between husband and wife. Even in family. Why do you think they raise their voice? Because they want to outwit the other person. They want to outwit the other person that they're dealing with. In the family, there is strife. You know why? Because there is no forgiveness. That is why a lot of families break down. Or a lot of families ended up broken. Because they would rather practice vengeance or getting even rather than forgiveness. If one of the members, even I will be specific here. If, if one of the parents have learned only how to forgive how to forgive properly, chances are marriage, that marriage can be saved. Because we are practicing vengeance instead, most of arguments end up with a deeper problem. It is the main cause of senseless argument. You know, World War I, if you will, <laughs> World War I could easily have been avoided if only one person, one of those who made the decision in that conflict, if only one of them stood up and said, can we just forgive these people? You know what? Even World War II, if they could only, if Hitler or some of those people who started the war only practice forgiveness, chances are Second World War could have been avoided. But because of vengeance, see what happened. Number two, what does vengeance can do to us? It will turn you into, into a troublemaker. In Proverbs 24, verses 8 to 9, if you are always planning evil or if you are always planning to get even, you will earn a reputation as a troublemaker. Any scheme of fool things up is sinful. People hate a person who has nothing but scorn for other people. If you always search for vengeance, if you always, your idea of life is, if you wrong me, I will get even with you. If you shoot me with a shotgun, I will bring a cannon and I will blow your house. If you have this gun, I have a bigger gun. If you have this car, I have a bigger truck. If that is our idea, chances are, 100% rather, 
I'm sure of this. If that is your idea, you are a troublemaker. In your school, haven't you noticed a pattern? Those people who always start the trouble, they always want to get even. Forgiveness is not included even in their vocabulary. Those troublemakers, I'll give you an example, country like South Korea, North Korea, specific. Why do you think they're causing this much trouble? Why? Because they want to get even with America. Period. Those people who always seek or seeking or always seeking to get even, they are the troublemaker. Even in the family. The troublemaker is the one who always seek for vengeance. I know I am one before. I used to be one. I still remember when my brother, he was a Christian and he keeps on telling me what you're doing is wrong. You know, you always come home, it's either you're so high or you're so drunk. You always spend your money and then when your money is gone, you'll go to mommy and daddy and ask for more money. And look at what you did to the car. Look what you did to your room. And you're always complaining about what I did. I was, I was against him all the time. So whenever he had this Bible study, what I will do is, I will turn on the stereo so loud that they could barely hear each other. And when I said the stereo so loud, you can hear the window doing like that. So my brothers who were having their Bible study, he was a Christian. Of course, he always rebuked me out of love. What they did was, during that time, they would move to the garden so that they can have peaceful Bible study. Guess what I will do? I will get my gun and I will start my target shooting. Bang! 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 No one, they're so scared because I'm carrying a gun. No one will bother to tell me, can you please stop? I was the troublemaker. Why? Because I just want to get even with my brother for rebuking me. Vengeance can turn you into a troublemaker. Amen? Number three, in Romans 12, 18 to 19, it's written, Do everything possible on your part to live in peace with everybody. Never take revenge, my friends, but instead let God's anger do it. For the scripture says, I will take revenge, I will pay back, says the Lord. In other words, vengeance will deny you of godly peace. Vengeance will give you more sleepless night. Number one, the first thing that, <clears throat> that person is so arrogant. That person is so mayabang. That person is so unfair. I want to get even with him. And you cannot sleep. You're just thinking, how can I get even? You know what? What I will do is I will get a toothpick and I will insert it inside his car lock so he cannot open his car anymore. But to be sure, I will put super glue in it so that they cannot remove it. Oh, but that is only so that they can remove it with the remote. Oh, now I know. I will get my key and pretend that I will walk like this. And then I will go around and do the same thing. Oh, most probably he will go for a repair. It will cost him $2,000. Oh, what the rate? The insurance company will pay for that. Oh, I know. I will remove the airs from his tire, all four tires. And before you knew it, it's already sun, sun, uh, sunrise. You lost your sleep. You see, by seeking pensions, you will notice that. Number one, you will lose your peace. And by seeking and achieving, by get, achieving that point of getting even, even if you get even, get even, even if you were able to do it, what comes next? Conscience. By getting even, who among you found that, ah, now I can sleep at last, knowing that I destroyed that human's being life. 
Really? What among you feel that way? Or experience that? None. You know what? What comes next after that? Your conscience will bother you. And it will cause you more sleepless night. In other words, you will lose godly peace. The next one, number four. In Ephesians 4, 31 to 32, Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insult. No more hateful feelings or any sort. By the way, did you notice that? No more shouting. No more shouting. It means shouting in anger. No more shouting in anger. No more shouting or insults, no more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tender-hearted to one another. And forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. Because vengeance will deny godliness in you. Instead of becoming godlike as what Paul has exhorted us, you will become like... Can you say that name? Satan. You will notice that they carry some something, some mark. You will notice that those people who are vengeful, those who are people who are seeking always for vengeance, they carry these similarities among themselves. They are like Satan-like. Look the person beside you. Can you, can you look the person beside you? Sitting beside you? What do you see? Honestly. I remember we have this game when we were in Kuwait to know how much the couple know each other. First question. Who is the first kiss of the husband? Oh, they got it right. Number two. Where did you go on your first date? Oh, they got it. The third question, how do you call your partner, your husband, when you're angry? Wow. The person, one of the contestants said, uh, excuse me, Pastor, uh, angry as in very, very angry or angry only? Why? What's the difference? You see, when he, when he, when he, when he, she is angry, she would call me by my name. But if she is very, very, very angry, she would call me Satan, Lucifer, Diablo, Demonio. Those people who are seeking vengeance, you will see this. They are like or Satan-like. What is the nature of Satan? They always search for destruction. They always searching for killing, hurt, inflicting pain. What does the Bible says? For he came to the world to kill and destroy. If you are carrying the kind of feeling, rebuke it. Because you were created according to the image and likeness of God. And vengeance can turn you into a Satan-like creature. And I am not joking. I am very serious about this. And last, it will make you weak and defenseless. Music team, can you join me again? Proverbs 25 to 28, if you cannot control your anger... You are as helpless, helpless as a city without walls open to attack. It will make you weak and it will make you defenseless. Whenever people started to seek for vengeance, chances are spiritually that person is weak. That is why a lot of people fell into temptation of doing what is wrong rather than doing what is right. Who among you can pray seriously with all holiness 
and with the sanctity of prayer when you are keeping that or when you are harboring that vengeance feeling or vengeful feeling, sorry. Whenever you possess that hatred inside your heart, honestly, can you pray? No. You know why? Because you are defenseless and weak spiritually. Because you let Satan to rule over your heart. Remember, whenever you talk about love and we talk about forgiveness, it is the Holy Spirit who is governing you. But whenever you're talking or you're harboring vengeance, whenever you are trying to get even with other people, chances are it is Satan who is controlling your heart. But Pastor, I caught my husband chatting, messenger, what he didn't know. I got exactly the same account on my cell phone. So whenever that girl send, send my husband a text message, I could read it. And what did they write? He said, did you eat your lunch? I miss you. And what did your husband say? Voila, she didn't, he didn't answer. I should get even with that girl. She knew that my husband is married. Why does he keep on doing that? Oh, a lot of people are reacting because I know your, your husband is guilty. That is why, you know the solution? Only use one account. I'm just joking. Solution is this. Always conform to the will and the plan of God. Let God change and take control of your heart. Rather than seek for vengeance, always seek that can, what can bring good things, what can bring love, what can bring good, good feeling, peace, joy. That instead of seeking for those things that can destroy us, what we exhorted, those things that are lustful to the eyes, that the world are offering us, instead search for those things that will give glory to God, that can make you righteous. In the end, church, I want you to ask yourself this question. And I want you to focus on this. Honestly, does getting even really solve the problem? Does getting even solve your problem? No. Does it make you feel better? No. Does it make you a better person? Does it make you more godly? Therefore, church, vengeance has no room for us. It is not the solution. Vengeance should not be present in our heart. Pastor, I just want to teach my, my kid a lesson. If I will get even with them, if I will punish them, most probably they will listen to me next time. Did they? Pastor, because our neighbor is so rude, I just want to block their driveway because they keep on doing that every day. By blocking their driveway, did you accomplish anything? No. Did it solve the problem? No. But one thing, the Bible says that instead of seeking revenge, why don't you give them something to think about? The next time they wrong you, cook some spring rolls and give them some. And when they taste it, wow, this is heavenly food. Yeah. And you will get more if you will stop blocking our driveway. The Bible says, instead of seeking revenge, choose instead love and forgiveness. Because this is who we are. We were created to forgive and love. Amen? By the way, when they started to persecute our church, I would like to give you a good news. 
The church has been searching for children's table and chair so that we can turn one room in the basement as a classroom. So when kids like Jeriel, kids like right there, I'm getting, I'm getting old. When they go inside the room, they will have the sense that they are really inside the classroom that they have to study. But we do not have enough cash. The city of Lloyd again had an auction this morning and we were able to get chair and table for $45, right? For $45, which is a bargain considering it is all for the 15 tables and chair for $45. Brother was saying, for one? No, for the 15. Really? It's like it's a, it's a steal. And not only that, we were supposed to go there because they told us they are selling chairs like this. But when we went there, Brother Vernon fell in love with the car, with the van. And he said, oh, this van is nice. Oliver, I, I have a big line of credit. If this is lower than 5000 I will go for it. Well, they gave it to us for 3200 So now, church, the youth, especially the youth, yeah, you will start walking again. <laughs> it's summer. No, now you have, in order to go to the senior ministry, you have two choices. Either you walk or you use the van. Whenever you practice forgiveness and love, blessing is what God said, because this is what I promised you. Whenever someone is persecuting you, or you, maybe you're hurting, maybe you are in pain, the Bible tells us, hey look, forgive instead and be blessed. Who among you wants to be blessed? Amen. All of us. Maybe Brother Echo wants to be cursed. He didn't raise his hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Godfrey, you want to be cursed or blessed? <laughs> I give glory to God because all of us wants to be blessed. Therefore, therefore, number one, forgive and love. Number two, don't miss the second part of the sermon next, next Saturday. Because it is about the promise of forgiving those who wronged us. Amen? Can we all stand up, please? Stand up, please. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for revealing to us the importance, Lord God, of living a life in accordance to your design. You didn't design us or created us in such a way that we will be capable of judging. In fact, we have learned, Lord God, that we are a poor judge. And being so, therefore, we should cease in judging others. Instead, you encouraging us, you had encouraged us to instead forgive and love. And today, Lord God, you reveal to us The destruction that vengeance or getting what getting even can cost us. I ask, Lord God, for those, Lord God, who are harboring pain, those who were wronged, those who were abused, I ask, Lord God, that if they possess even a small amount of vengeance, I ask, Lord God, by your blood. By the blood of your Son, deliver them and liberate them from this. And instead, Lord God, enrich them with your love. Sir, in flesh or relatives who are, shall I, what I shall say, removed and detached from their loved ones, I ask, Lord God, that you give them the courage and the strength 
for them to practice forgiveness tonight. That they will have the word, the boldness, and the tenacity, Lord God, to talk to that person, to talk to that person, Lord God, that they severe their relationship with, to reconcile, to be restored. Let the blessing that you promised, Lord God, in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Galatians, be upon those people who have heard the message tonight. And as, as we call the elders of the church to the front, touch the people whom you think must be delivered from any kind of vengeful act or idea. Elders to the front, please. In Jesus' name, Lord God, touch your people. Let them be delivered and let them be liberated from this worldly, Lord God, attitude. Forgiveness and love should reign as you design that way. You design us that way. Tonight, Lord, I leave them to you, your church. As what you said, Peace I give you, peace I leave unto you. Let thy peace be upon your children. Let thy peace govern this church. And let thy peace, Lord God, nurture your church. In Jesus' name, amen.